Sir, we're approaching a podcast. It's part of the Legion Academy Collective called Dice Time. That's it. Bob Swim and Ben Jetrin are there. Uh, my lord, there are several Star Wars Legion podcasts. It, it could be any number- That is the one. Admiral, set your course for Dice Time. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Dice Time. A brand new 2021 awaits us with a whole new show, a whole new year where you have to listen to Bob and I talk. But not today. Bob is actually out right now. We're on a secret mission without him. Uh, and by that, I mean Bob is actually very sick, and uh, his voice was not feeling very... He, he, he was not feeling very up to it, and his voice was uh, giving out, so I... Uh, so we had to we had to bring on some hired help today. Although, what's what's what that, that that's what people want you to think, right? What's actually going on is I'm getting Bob a, a birthday present, and it got stolen by pirates. So I'm actually on my way to pick it up right now. And by pick it up, I mean ambush those pirates who took him from me and get it back. But I couldn't do it alone, and it's a surprise for Bob, so I didn't want him to find out. So I didn't invite him. So I hired uh, our our good buddy Paul. Back on the show, so he, uh, Paul Watson, is here in the in this ambush hidey hole with me. How you doing, Paul? I'm doing all right. How are you? Good. You ready to uh, get these pirates? Yeah. Although I think we've got a we've got a little bit of time if I check here before they're scheduled to to come out of there. So I figured while while we're uh, while we're lying in wait, we could uh, talk a little bit of Legion. Hey, I'm always ready to talk about some Legion. Great. We got some good stuff coming today. Today we're going to be talking about like top three per per category of of unit type. We're going to look at the top three of what we like, what we like best, what we think is competitively like on top right now, but also like what's the what's what's the most fun. So we're gonna we're gonna break down and do a bunch of a bunch of top threes of the best of the best of every kind of unit. And then we're also we're also gonna have a fun little discussion of uh. If you were a part of Legion, where would you be? And then we are also we'll, we'll briefly touch on the news that got dropped today, which is about the uh, the clone droid uh, specialist packs that just got they they just got the articles like hours before we started recording, and 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 Bob would be sad if we didn't touch on news that, like literally the day we were recording if we didn't touch on it because it'll never get fresher than that. So. I guess that's a uh, that's that's we probably have enough time to hit all that before the pirates come out. Yeah, I think so. All right. So, Paul, what do you think? If there was a top three of of of, of encompassing every faction in Legion right now, if we were going to run through the top three of each unit, where would you want to start? Oh gosh, I mean. I think you probably just start at the top, right? You start with your commanders, the most yeah. important part of your army. So, 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 Paul, if you were gonna, if you were, had to pick now, the top three best commanders in Legion as of right now, who would they be and why? Well, I. I First think... off, are are you looking at the? Uh, are you looking like competitively, or just most fun, or like, you, or are you combining them? Um, I'm kind of combining them. I'm kind. I'm combining okay. them with definitely how good they are based on like you know different stats, keywords, those kinds of things. Um, competitively, if they're pretty good, um, and also just units that I think are fun, thematic, um, enjoy playing. So all of that kind of comes together into the into my rating system. So some okay. of them might not be the most competitive, but there's but other reasons. There. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They're still I, good I, units for different reasons. I made two top three lists. Some of them, or one of them is, is based on like what I thought was competitively viable. And then the second one was what I think is the most fun. Uh, they definitely, I don't think they have anything that really overlaps between them. <laughs> oh wait, no, some of them do. Some of them do, but uh, some, some of them are just me personally, what I think. So, I mean, like it's not, super objective it's very sub th this is a very subjective subject Abs absolutely It'll, i'll be interested to see like where we overlap so uh because we made these lists independent of each other so yeah I i'm excited well, to hear what you have to 
have to say. <laughs> Paul, take it away with uh, the commanders. So I think like number three, we're gonna do like back and forth. Okay. Yeah. So like that. my number three commander, I think is Grievous. Okay. I think he's got a lot of cool keywords and in, in scale. He kind of acts like that Jedi um, without all of their full abilities. But I love having eight health on a unit oh, yeah. on your commander right with those red saves. Um, his one pip is gross. You always have to watch out for it. You cannot let Grievous hit you with a one pip on like your entire army, no. or it's pretty much the game. <laughs> Better explosions, as I, as I like to call it. Yeah, he's he's a really he's a really solid commander. You don't have to worry about him dying if he gets left out in the open too much, um, with that eight health, and he can he can go toe to toe with a lot of force users just fine. So. Oh yeah. I think he comes in at my number three. Ironically, Grievous was also my number three on my <laughs> most, on my most fun list. Yeah. Uh. He he is he is quite fun to play, uh, in my opinion. Getting getting the uh, getting the one off the the one pip off and getting to chop up a whole bunch of dudes and everyone I've ever played like demo games and stuff with they love playing Grievous because it's like that's the first thing they gravitate toward is like I wanna I wanna play this. You see him spinning his lightsabers and everything in the movie and you're like, how do I do that in the game? Like that sounds so cool. <laughs> and yeah, I think they thematically did a great job nailing him. Oh yeah, definitely. Number three competitively, this could be wrong. This is the one I didn't feel super great about. I don't, I don't, I'm not a super competitive player. So I mean, like all my knowledge goes off of like what I've seen at Muncie and what I've heard from either discussions on the Legion page or like podcasts or something. So bear with me when I'm completely wrong <laughs> when I when I go down my competitive list, okay? <laughs> but number three, I actually put. Uh, Captain Rex. Okay. So I don't know. I don't know how you feel about that, but I feel like Rex is he's arguably still like one of the most important pieces on the clone table because of his command cards and yeah. all the sharing he can do. So just keep that brief. Uh, yeah, definitely. Where Where are you at on number two? Number two, I. You know, I had a really hard time with commanders because I think there's a lot of them that are really good. That's fair. But, yeah. but right now, I feel like I put Aiden as my number two. I okay. feel like her command cards and that whole um, Imperial Special Forces list, there's just so many good keywords and so many um, additional things that Aiden brings to that um, kind of list. And she's got some awesome gear. Mm-hmm. And, and again, some awesome keywords on her card for the point cost. She is just a very solid commander. Oh, absolutely, I agree. And th- for that reason, she made number two on my competitive list. <laughs> yeah, I think she she definitely fits in that that category with like the Veers and the Krennix, except she's more of a combat focused. Yeah, except um, she's more frontliner. Yeah. Yeah, mid range hero. So yeah, I. I I think she's a really solid um, leader for your Imperial forces that want to get in there and, and shoot some stuff up. <laughs> I haven't played Empire in quite a while because I'm trying to transition to playing more clones because I'm finally starting to get all my clones painted up so I can start fielding them because I've always wanted to run my my purple clone army. Yeah. And I really want to play Anakin Obi-Wan. And I and and thank 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 you to shout out to Paul Watson in the chat for for uh, <laughs> for getting me Anakin. I I had a little bit of financial stumbling that I've been doing recently, so I wasn't gonna get anything last time I was in Muncie. And Paul uh, ever so graciously uh, bought me an Anakin because he needed he needed a couple more dollars on this transaction, I guess. <laughs> I did, but I'm but I'm definitely going to be painting that up. I just listened to Legion Academy talking about uh, Anakin and Obi Wan as a list concept, and I cannot wait to run what Joe posted. I'm super it's, excited to try it. Yeah, it's a very fun list. Anyway, that aside, I put I also put Aiden as my number two for Imperials. That's where I was going. I haven't played Empire in a long time, but when I get back to it, I'm looking to play Aiden because she looks she cut. She kind of reminds me of a rebel hero 
honestly, with like the way her keywords and stuff worked out. I, yeah. I felt I felt a very rebel vibe from her, which is only thematically appropriate. Yeah, spoiler uh, alert. Jeez, whoa, for those hang of you on. who haven't. <laughs> more, more spoilers coming up right now. I also want to play Callus, and Josh was like, and, and Josh, my roommate who plays Empire and nothing else, was like, I agree. I also want one more hero just so I can just so I can play what I call the traitors list, <laughs> which is just going to be all Imperial defector heroes. Nice. But it actually sounds really good. Like I was looking at Callus and I was like, man, I really want to try Callus. Yeah, he he looks good. Uh, and then for my fun slot on number two, I actually put Obi-Wan Kenobi mm. because I really love the way Obi-Wan plays i'm just not really good at it but i need to oh. get good at it <laughs> but it's but it's but that aside i still think he's super fun i love playing uh obi-wan and like working his way up the field and protecting all the clones while he's moving marching up and i'm just like yeah this is so much this is so cool absolutely i love that all right where did you place number one did you put so, the generic commander as number one paul <laughs> i should have because i played a generic <laughs> commander probably more than any other commander <laughs> out there but no i actually i actually put someone that i never play because i'm a little bitter about it um cassian actually comes in as my number one for commander he his keywords and his command cards are just so so good. Um, unfortunately for me, it's he he comes into that spot because I can't put someone like Han Solo there because Cassian's just better than him. Yeah, Cassian K two is is arguably or not even really arguably just better Han Chewie. Yeah, and that's unfortunate to me because I think I like Han Chewie a little bit better than Cassian and K2. Don't get me wrong, I like I like K2 a lot, um, but Cassian to me, man, he's just he's so strong at that. Again, that like right around that hundred point range, he's yep. so so good for the points that you pay for him. Well, this is quite. We're, I can tell we're going to overlap a lot because I put Cassian and K2 as my top. At number one for competitive slot. And then on my fun side, I put Han and Chewie. <laughs> <laughs> I, every single time I'm making a list for fun, uh, Han and Chewie usually end up in that list. And I'm just like, hell yeah, let's just do it. Just yeah. Gunsling around and get Chewie out there. Yeah. I'm always trying to find a place for Chewie in my lists. Oh yeah. He's great. Him and, him and Han, I just love to play with like their command cards and like, their command cards are just so much fun to play. Like they can do so much rebel goodness. Yeah, I um, I have a, a friend locally that I play against a lot, and we um really sat down one day and really had a big think tank for one of his lists that he's doing very very well with. Um, and it's Cassian K two, um, and Chewie, Chewba- Chewie, and three full squads of Wookies, and it's a yep. nightmare. Right I hands. I had the I had the displeasure of losing of losing hardcore to that list last time I was in Muncie. It it just has a, a lot of those it's good gross. characters in there. Yeah, Cassian and K two and Chewbacca are just like those three are so much fun to have in a list together. Yeah, they really are. All right, shall we move on to operatives, Paul? Oh yeah, this might be one of my favorite categories. This is my favorite category, <laughs> like for sure. The operative slot is my favorite slot. Like period. <laughs> yeah, I I have a feeling that we're gonna have some similar characters on this one again. <laughs> I I we we ma- we bare minimum we matched up every time because I'm making <laughs> two lists. That's true. But we matched up every time on that first one. Let's see if we do the same here. So where so where are we on the number three? Yeah, coming in at my number three uh, is Sabine. I Ouch. I really enjoy Sabine. She that Mando armor, that speed three move, and gosh, explosions is such a fun card to play. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm just so disappointed you only gave her three. Well, <laughs> <laughs> it's hard it's hard to not give the other two the higher spots right now. <laughs> Fair enough. I I'm like oh I'm honored that you put her in the top three and you're like she gets number three and I'm like how dare you. <laughs> <laughs> So for okay, so for my uh my 
competitive number three, I actually put Padme. Okay. I feel like she's a really strong operative for the for the clones right now because she can still do the token share, the standby share. But then she does a whole lot of token share. She can also do secret mission, and she's just a really, really solid battery for the Republic that I still see making it into a lot of lists, or at least people talking about wanting to keep her in the list. Yeah, and I honestly think that we're going to see more of her as people really find that spot for her. Yeah. she. I know I'm definitely going to have her when I get to Republic Ladies Night, which I'm just one Ahsoka away from. <laughs> now that I can make Ayla Sakura my field commander and fill that slot. Yeah. I'm just one Ahsoka away from <laughs> Republic Ladies Night, and then it's happening. But uh, on the fun side... Uh, I put my number three as my boy, Cad Bane. <laughs> yep. I love, love playing Cad Bane. I, I love the character so much, first off. One of my favorite bounty hunters and one of my favorite Star Wars characters. But he plays so... He, he is so, like, techy and stuff he can do. He can do all this sort of stuff because of his command cards and the way that you can equip him with all this gear to do all this crazy stuff. And his keywords just play into everything. He's got the Bane to I love the Bane tokens. Like, yeah. you can play mind games with your opponent if you're really good at it. And you can do all this crazy stuff. He's like, there's so much he can do. And in the right hands, he can be a really deadly scary force. And that's what I, I, just, I just love. I feel like they did him thematic justice. Absolutely. I absolutely agree. Um, it, it's funny because he's actually a good segue into my number two, who is oh. Cad Bane. <laughs> oh, great! <laughs> and Perfect. yes, I completely agree. Thematically, in the show, he always seems like he's one step ahead. And like you said, with all the keywords and all the gear that you can give him, he always feels like he is one step ahead and just always is doing something that your opponent can't deal with or doesn't want to deal with right. or they're forced between, you know, two bad choices and they have to pick one. Uh -huh. It's a, uh, it's a lot of fun playing Cad Bane. I, I had the, the pleasure of playing him in an event. So I got to play him three times in a row on, on the day and it, every single game, he did not disappoint. He was so yeah. much fun to play. I want I'm, I talked about this list a little a couple episodes ago, but I really now that now that I now I can actually proxy it and play it now that the T series is out. I want to do the T series droid, three squads of commandos with uh full squads of commandos with vibro swords in the Dioxus mine, and then Cad Bane is the center point of, as the centerpiece of my list. Yeah, absolutely. That'll be a fun list. Yeah, I played it once already. I've proxied it once with, instead of one Commando Squad, I have two of them built like that, and then instead of the T-Series in one squad, I had Grievous. And it was really fun. But I would like to bring a third squad and just replace Grievous with the T-Series and see how, it, see how it goes. So your two was Cad Bane. My number two, competitively, I placed Darth Maul. How do you feel about that, Paul? I actually so that same list that I played Cad Bane, I also had Darth Maul in there. I will say he is really good too. The fact yeah. that he has two one pips in his cards, so you can bring three one pips in a in a game, is really quite good. And his it's it, it, what really blows my mind about him is his action economy. Yeah, is he he gets getting, so many actions, so you can just. You really don't need to you, you really don't need to worry too much about making every single move count because you get extras compared to everyone right. else. So you right. can just you can do everything. And not to mention the double bladed lightsaber throwing eight dice. It's so good. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ugh. Uh and then number two for my operative slot, for the fun side, I put R two D two. Because I love him and C-3PO running around playing Secret Mission. It is... I, I As soon as I saw the Secret Mission keyword, I was like, I'm going to... This is one of my favorite keywords in the game now. This is so much... This is just a little mini-game inside of Legion. Yeah. Just getting the droids to the other side of it. Like, don't don't shoot at me! We're just trying to get to the other side! <laughs> uh, I love And I love it. Alright, Paul. Where did... Who made number one on your operative list? Oh, mine is... I think I know. 
is the Go man, ahead. the myth, the legend, the none other than Luke Skywalker. Yep. <laughs> he is so good. So good. Um, I'll tell you right now, I competitively put him as number one as well, and I'll just let you lead this discussion here. <laughs> yeah, I, I just think it's one of those things. Most of your big characters, like your big force users, have an opportunity to have a double attack in a turn. Um, or something like that, and really gives you that feeling like that hero is really doing a lot of work. And Mm -hmm. really, if you look at it, Luke has two one pips that let him do that, on top of a three pip that lets him essentially sacrifice his attack to make it so two other units that your opponent have cannot attack. Yeah. And it's so strong. It essentially, you know, it's like a, it's like getting, you know, three extra actions or attacks or lack thereof, I guess, out of Luke. And it's just, he's so strong. He's got a lot of tricks. A disengage on a unit is one of the grossest things for for a force user that can jump from one unit to another and just keep hacking up, you know, with Luke having seven dice, too, on his lightsaber. Uh-huh. Seven health, four courage. Like, he just does whatever he wants, essentially, yeah. all game long. He's just he's just the perfect unit. He's he's a lot of fun. <laughs> he's, he's a lot of fun to play, honestly. He just... Yeah. He really feels like... I mean, you want your saber user to do a lot of work in a game. Mm-hmm. And he is one that I've, I've played a, a good handful of times... And I've never been disappointed in how much work Luke has been able to do in the game. With Yoda riding on his back, he learned the most important lesson, which is how to carry the game on your back. (laughs) (laughs) And now, too, like, I'm I'm even more, like, excited, you know, with, uh, well, I don't know that I should hit that spoiler. That's a little newer, huh? Uh Oh. (laughs) I'll leave it alone. (laughs) Okay, okay. So who is your number one? Well, who do you who do you think based on my outrage earlier is my number one? <laughs> I had I had a feeling at the beginning it was going to be Sabine because uh, <laughs> she is one of your favorites for sure. Yeah, not even she's bar none my favorite unit in the game. I, I I think my bar none my favorite character in the game is Sabine. She is everything that I love in a Star Wars character uh, mechanically. Uh, I know people have gripes about her thematically as a character but uh i'll i'll save that discussion for another day uh but she is she's you know she's a mando which means she gets that that badass red dice uh impervious armor surge to defend save that best save in the game over there she's got uh she's got jump speed three some of my favorite stuff. She's got the dark saber, which is like the co- one of the coolest weapons that you can put on. Uh, it get, which gives her dauntless and everything. She does the explosions, the one pip. The explosions is so much fun. I I've, I've really come to in the course of op- from the box opening of Sabine to where I have her now. I've had so much fun turning when do I do explosions and how do I do explosions into an art form, which I feel like is thematically what, what Sabine would appreciate. I've had so much fun doing all that with her. Absolutely. She's really good. And and the fact that you can play her in multiple different ways, you know, you can play her as this kind of range two gunslinger, or you can play her as I'm going to get in there with the dark saber and cut some stuff up. and Or the <laughs> ultimate back, uh, back line <laughs> defense. Yeah. I, I suppose. But she's, she's, I think, I think you're right. I think she's meant to be played aggressively, but I usually, end up playing her like okay it's like i have a i have a mindset i go does my opponent have a have a lightsaber user okay here's what we're gonna do we're gonna go we're gonna we're gonna go in and we're gonna dive into explosions turn two and then i'm going to and then my target is go for your lightsaber user and either win that fight or at least whittle them down so by the time they get to the rest of my army my the rest of my army can gun them down yeah yeah, she's she's fun. She can definitely fit that that linebacker kind of unit too. That just is gonna sit and wait for that that saber user to to really put some hurt on them. Yeah, I've never used explosives defensively, but might be a good idea. Uh, 
I find that most often you get an opportunity for explosions that's just way too good to pass up. Oh yeah, for sure. It to, for me it rarely ever lets me down. Yeah, I've had good and bad, but I still do it. Anyway, should we move on to special forces? Sure. Do you want to go to wait? Do you want to go to core troopers or do? We oh sure, we'll skip? do core. I think I wrote okay. special forces first, but I'll do core. Where, 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 who makes your your number three, Paul? My number three is the good old phase ones. Yeah. For the clones, they're just they're the, they're a staple. I mean, they they're so good. They have you know clones in general sharing tokens. They have a lot of good weapon upgrades. They're essentially the the mix between the rebel trooper and the stormtrooper, the you know the best of both worlds, the good mm-hmm. armor save and the good weapons, and you throw that all together, and here you have phase one clones, and I, I just don't. For me, when I play a Republic list, I don't leave home without phase ones. There's at, at least a couple on every list. Oh sure. Uh, I'm not really totally sure about my number threes on this. For the fun side, I put stormtroopers <laughs> because I don't I don't know why. Just like they're I I just like seeing swaths of stormtroopers on my board when I can when I can do it. Especially the fact that they have all of the uh, the upgrades now that you can equip them with the different troopers and stuff that you can that with the uh, upgrade the core upgrade expansion was just like a really nice touch for adding and fleshing out stormtroopers a bit. Yeah, absolutely. I and, do like a unit oh. too where you when you're losing models, you're losing the worst dice in the Yeah, that's the true. Squad. Then there's that. <laughs> uh and then so for number 3 competitively and feel free to shut me down and tell me I'm wrong. Are shore troopers still a thing? Ouch. Okay, yeah, no, <laughs> shore troopers are definitely still a thing. Well, then I'm putting them at three, how about that? <laughs> All right, <laughs> I'll allow it. I might swap it with two, we'll see. It's definitely not one, but we'll put them at, it's it's three, and you can tell me if I need to swap them with two. <laughs> okay. All right, take us away, two. My number two is B1s, B1 battle droids. All right. They're they're just so darn cheap, and it's so easy to get full activation control on your list with with B ones with mm-hmm. those basic battle droids. It just I I played like I said I a little earlier I played a, a list that had Cad Bane and Maul. Well, that list also had an AAT in it. I was able to get three monster units in a list. Yep. And still have I think I still had ten activations. Yikes. Because of the B1s. Mm-hmm. Maybe it was nine activations, but B1s, like, they can just fill out your army for you. There's a ton of them on the board. Very rarely does a full unit go down because not many, not many units can put through, you know, six or seven hits through heavy cover and things like that. Yeah. So they're just, they're durable because of the health, not because of their saves. Right, they just right. Die. <laughs> Um, I do like, again, that when you put a heavy weapon in them, they're protected by the, the crappy battle droids that only have the white die to attack. Yeah, their they're so, good die, their good pool is good until the end. Yeah, a- absolutely. And I think the other thing about B1s is y- you just don't care. You know going forward that they're going to die. And yep. so when they die, you don't feel bad about it. You're just like, well, there's some more droids dead. The rebel mentality. <laughs> yep. I think the one thing that I will say that contradicts them being this high on the list is they are such a pain to put together. <laughs> oh, it's, yeah. <laughs> it's almost like worth not putting them on a list ever with how bad they are to put together. <laughs> Take that, B1s. Yeah. With that garbage. in mind, I competitively put them at number two. Should I swap them with short troopers? Yeah, if that's... Okay, fine. <laughs> I mean, without knowing your number one, definitely. <laughs> All right, well, I'll swap them around, and I basically just will we'll copy what you said, because that that's exactly why I put them in there. Uh, number two on the fun side, I didn't pick phase one or phase two. I just said clones. <laughs> yeah, clones just in general. Phase one and phase two clones are just so fun to play, and for the same reason I put stormtroopers on there, I just love seeing swaths of them on the board. 
I just love seeing the whole unit or the whole army all lined up, a whole bunch of clones ready to go into battle. Yeah. I, one thing that I didn't really mention when I was talking about clones is fire support. Oh, yeah. It's not something I use all the time, but when you do, finding those good fire support plays can really change a game. And being a, a you know a unique thing that clones can do, um, it's it's a lot of fun. So who made your number one? My number one is actually Shore Troopers. Oh, okay, all right. I think Shore Troopers uh, are just really good for what you pay for them. Again, they upgrade their weapons from the white dice to the black dice. I mean, they're essentially like phase ones. Mm -hmm. Except every time you give them an order, they get a free aim token. It's it's really quite strong. And then in the list like that I was talking about a little earlier, that Aiden and the Imperial Special Forces, and then it yeah. runs Shore Troopers and Mortars, yep, that yep. list pumps out so much um, critical damage at long range. It it's really a tough list um, to play against. And shore troopers, that that heavy weapon is so good on them. Uh huh. Um, yeah, they they just have a lot going for them. So I actually, so I feel like we did our top three competitive in reverse because I as my number one, I put phase two clones. <laughs> all right, all right. Uh, just because I've. I've uh, they, I've I've fielded them, but I've I know that there are people that have fielded way more of them. Uh, they're just like the most solid quality core unit I think in the game, with what they can do, their ability to their ability to work together, their ability to stay alive. If you if you're playing them right, they can get the surges every round, and then you have your commanders and your operatives who are supporting them. If you're getting all of them, they they can absolutely be like the hammer of your list. They can they can put in all the work themselves. Yeah. So and that put, courage too when you yeah, play a list that has courage too across the board, it's really yeah, nice. Yeah, it is. It, I was gonna say it's just really they they I don't think they really let you down until they get like cut in half by operative Luke. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's they don't. Down. Clones don't like saber users. That's for sure. Uh, nope. And then number one for my fun side, I actually put fleet troopers. <laughs> because yeah, you do enjoy those fleet troopers. <laughs> if I can run an entire list of nothing but fleet troopers, I have a good time. <laughs> because yes. they are, I put I put them there specifically because of my uh, my Tanta four team list where I, for skirmish where it's just nothing but. Leia, R2, 3PO, and then four scattergun fleet troopers. And they're they're just so much that list is just so much fun. I if you've never played it, I highly recommend you if you can if you have the fleet troopers to run it, give it a shot. Or just proxy them or something. Like it's it's a super fun list. You're gonna love it. I I just wanna jump in here and say Yeah, yeah. You know, you said if you've ever played it. I would love to hear if anyone but you has ever <laughs> played that list. <laughs> that's that's fair. You know, it's fair. I don't think I, I, I doubt anyone has. But if you have, you reach out to us. <laughs> Let us know how you what you thought. Definitely, because right. I want to know who else is crazy enough to run that list. <laughs> oh come on! I, if you if if anyone else asked me the question, Paul, it would have been like, I think Paul Watson's crazy enough to run that list. I I, I would. <laughs> I like fleet troopers. They're just they're just not as good as some of the other things that are out there. I, early on in, in Legion, I used to run um, e most of the time I was running two fleet troopers in my list. Uh -huh. um, and really, all I did with them is they usually could delete a unit on their own with a shot, and then they would be the things that would get focused down. So they would be the distraction for the rest of my army. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, uh, my girlfriend Trista painted up a squad of them in like the ca like a like a camo that like a really really off color scheme that was like camo and like pink, and it was like not pink camo but like actual woodland camo and then like pink accents here and there, and they, instead of white helmets they have camouflage like woodland camo helmets too. I call them my Felucia fleet troopers. Nice and. They and she and she runs one squad of them in her skirmish list where she has Cassian, K2, some RTs, and then a squad of fleet troopers. And I just put them in there because she painted them up. 
But it also just serves the list really well because it's another really threatening force that when you you start bringing them up the board, your opponent's like, do I shoot at the RTs? Do I shoot at Cassian and K2? Do I shoot at the fleet troopers? Whatever I let go is really going to punish me. <laughs> right. Yeah, you definitely can't ignore fleet troopers. Yeah. Because if you do, well, the Tanta 4 team will show you what happens. Yeah. That shotgun's right. really good. <laughs> now we'll move on to special forces. Yeah, this is the... This is the section that I feel like people are going to be like, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> That's fair. Even though I'm I'm going to start right off by saying that I feel pretty solid about my three my my two lists. I feel I feel pretty safe. I don't feel like I did them wrong. I I don't feel like I did my special forces wrong, but I think I might have different opinions. So Oh, I'm sure. The start us off in that number 3 slot for special forces is uh the Imperial Special Forces. Okay. I think again, like Hot the keywords. All oh, they are, all oh, oh, they're all right here. <laughs> <laughs> the the keywords on them, um, and again, like I'm saying that because of the list that they're in. Like you run them sure. with Iden, you, you're running that list that is a bunch of shore troopers, Imperial Special Forces, and you're just throwing a lot of crits. You're generating a lot of aim tokens. Um, it's a really again solid list in those. Imperial Special Forces really um, have some cool keywords with, you know, Infiltrate. They can kind of come out anywhere on you. Um, Is the name 333 or like 332 or something of that list? I've heard heard names about it before. Oh, I... I've I've also just heard Tech Strike as the list name, but... Oh, yeah, I've just... (laughs) I guess I've just heard it as the Imperial Special Forces list, but <laughs> the only one. <laughs> yeah, it's just that one. <laughs> so I actually have the same slot or the same unit in both slots on my number three list here. Ooh. So number three competitively, and then also number three most fun. I actually put the Droid Commandos. Okay. Yeah. They are a super fun unit. I've loved playing them suicide bomber style, just running in with Dioxus mines <laughs> and being like, we don't care about poison. We'll take the initial blast, but you'll get hurt more. And then vibro sorting whoever's left. Uh, it's been, it's a super fun tactic to play, but they feel like really thematically dead on with like how they are in like the show. They're really scary. They move around a whole, they do a whole lot of movement shenanigans that scare, that scare the opponent. Like, Oh no, they're climbing up on walls now. What's this? <laughs> like yeah. Scale. Like, it's just like, they, uh, I also put them as a, uh, the strike team is also really good for like the sniper is really solid as well. Yeah. Uh, number two, my number two, and this is where I, I'm not sure where people will stand on it, but I'm standing by my decision is Wookie warriors. Ooh, yeah, hot oh. take here. Super hot take. I messed up. I didn't put Wookiees in my list. <laughs> I smart. Oh well. I think after the new changes, Wookiee Warriors are such a solid unit. I absolutely and, agree. And especially with all the Force users that we're seeing on the table. Mm-hmm. Um, and yes, is a Wookiee Warrior squad going to beat a Force user? Probably not. But that force user is going to be stuck fighting those Wookiees for multiple turns. Yep. And that's the big thing that I think that they bring. There's that piece of it. They can be kind of that linebacker against a, a force user. They have Pierce now, not only on their melee attack, but then also still their bowcaster. So they have Pierce in both of their dice pools. Again, it costs an aim in the melee, but... But when um, are you not aim-swinging with them? It, it, it's easy enough to get, you know, you can put an offensive push on them for when you need that that extra aim, or you could do Hunter if you're looking at, you know, going against other units with, like, multiple health or things like that. Yep. Um, they, they throw a lot of dice. They have a ton of health. Yes, their saves are bad, but it's 12 health. And, and like I talked about earlier, you know, when you bring them in mass, when you have three full Wookiee squads... You're just not going to be able to get through all of them. No. And and again, now that they have scale, it's really hard to because they can hop from cover to cover yep. and then 
there in your face. Um, I think Wookiee Warriors have gotten a lot better. Um, they're they're at the point where they're cheap enough that it doesn't feel bad to run them. Um, even as a, like a one of in a list, like hey, I'm gonna you know spend 110 points on a on a Wookiee squad and and it'll do some good work for you. So. I totally agree, and I regret not working them into my lists now uh, of my of my top threes here. <laughs> well, what do you have for your number two? Well, I'm interested. for number two, I actually put Imperial Special Forces. Okay. For competitively, uh, and then for fun wise, and this is totally a Ben, this is totally a Ben pick. I actually put Death Troopers. I, I actually think Death Troopers are good. They are, and I put, I mean, part, most of the reason why I put them on my fun side is because Death Troopers are my favorite Imperial Trooper, so I just love having them in my Imperial lists because they're just my favorite Trooper, <laughs> but uh, they're just super fun because they have, they're, like, ever since their launch, they've been really scary yeah, with their, like, yeah. suppressive range four guns that just completely mow down whoever they're shooting at. Uh, now there's this, if you watch the, uh, last video that, uh, well, you can't just yet at the time of recording because I'm not done editing it yet, but at the last video that Josh and I, the last battle report we recorded was the escape pod, uh, droids. Uh, he brought a squad of death troopers and put them in a gav tank. Oof. And it was very scary because he was like, I'm not even going to have them on their range four config. They're just going to start on their grenade launchers because I know they're about to get into range two. <laughs> and I was like, Ooh, no. <laughs> so it was, it was pretty scary. It was pretty scary to watch them all just get in the tank and load their grenades and just start driving toward us. And I was like, Oh no. Yeah, uh, but they're I, super fun. Yeah. They've always been one of those um, units that when it's on the table across from you're like, gosh, what am I going to do to those? You have to figure out how to deal with them because they are they have a lot of uh, tools at their disposal that they can they can make you hurt with. All right, Paul, number one. My number one is ARC Troopers. Yep. They're so good. That They're essentially, to me, kind of like the Death Troopers of the clone army. Oh, for sure. They, they have a lot of tricks up their sleeve. The fact that they have tactical get those aim tokens. And I say ARC Troopers in general. Be, uh, on the one hand, their sniper teams, uh, and I think everyone has probably said this, uh, like their sniper teams are the best. They are the best out of all four of the sniper teams. Um, but having said that, also a full ARC squad is very good, too. Yeah, I agree. So, I, I think ARC Troopers in general, they, again, they have a lot of good keywords. Um, having, like Death Troopers, at different ranges, they have different guns that they can use and get even more dice if they get in close. Um, so they can really punish an opponent who's coming at you, and then all of a sudden the ARC Troopers get to roll even more dice on you, which which clones can be really good at with those extra aims that they can share between each other. And yeah, there's a lot of, there's a lot of positives with those art troopers. And then again, the art troopers come with their, their signature heavies. Their basic heavy is great, but fives and echo are so good. <laughs> Not only in the art trooper oh, yeah. squads, but then but in, in any of the other too. squads. Yeah. Competitively, they also made my number one art troopers for sure, both in full and strike team variants. Uh, and then on the fun side, I, I did the Rebel Arc Troopers, which is Mandalorians. <laughs> yeah. For the fun side. I, I just love Mandalorians so much uh, thematically and then also mechanically. They are just them and Arc Troopers and Death Troopers like they all when I look at how elite they are, I'm like, this is what the Special Forces slot should feel like. Yeah. It's like absolutely what they should be. They, the other thing I love about them is you can, you know, they have, they, arc troopers, it's optional, but they can have jet packs. So yep. they have the jump, which is like arguably my favorite keyword in the whole game because I love jet packs so much. Uh, and they, you know, they have that solid armor and they have all those deadly weapons that Mandos bring the pistols, the best scad, the, the range four rocket. Like, it's just, it's so great. Yeah. I, I, I like them too. I, I agree with them being in your fun section. 
I don't think that they're competitive right now. Well, when I bring Sabine and three squads of Mandos next time, we'll uh, we'll find it. We'll we'll put them to the test. <laughs> yeah, they're they're fun. I definitely want to run that list and just play it and have a good time with it, because um, I think it will be a good time. Uh, oh, yeah. But when I when I build a list and I look at you know making a Mando squad and it's like roughly what 120 points. Yep. It's like but there's not much 10, left. But for 10 points cheaper, I can get a full Wookiee squad. Yeah, right. That right. I feel like feels much better than the Mando squad. Yeah. So that's I think they're maybe slightly overcosted for what you get out of them right now. Cause Dude, if, you want, like, if you want to bring down Mandos and points, I'm all for I'll, I'll sign that petition. <laughs> <laughs> I think if they came down just a little bit, like they'd be in, in the conversation. Um, the, the other fact is when they're, they have one less body in their unit than, you know, the other typical units like death troopers. Oh yeah. Or Imperial oh, yeah. special forces, you know, those things that we're talking about, those other units yep, yep. in this list. They just start with one less, and it. I don't feel like they necessarily needed that, but yeah, I that's could the, be wrong. That's the sad part is when you have when you bring Sabine and three Mandos, and you're like, oh, I have ten bodies between these squads. Yeah, it's it's not a lot. <laughs> All right. All right. Light support. Support units. This is probably my favorite favorite part of army building. This is sports. <laughs> All right. I had a hard time. I did too. All the My light and heavy supports, I don't feel I don't feel good about them, but we'll see. <laughs> I just had a hard time picking which ones are the best because I think, um, I, again, I really like this this part of the army, and I think that there is a lot of value to a lot of different units. But this is where um, we're for sure. So my so coming in at my number three are the Staps. Okay. For droids, and and the reason why I think that they're really good is I think like I really toyed with putting like speeder bikes on this this part right here uh-huh. um as well I just think the staps win that by just a little bit because of again the droids activation control that they give um you can run three staps and you can give one of them an uplink and now all of a sudden all of your staps will always get orders yep for the whole game. And so mm-hmm. they can run on the other side of the field from your entire army by themselves without anything to worry about. And you can activate them when you want. I think that's a really good quality about the staps um, that you only have to put like that one HQ uplink on one of the three squads. If you're putting all three in there and then you're done and then you're done <laughs> and, and getting the dodge token every time you move, is makes them even more durable than some of the other ones like speeder bikes. Yep. So I definitely think that they are a pretty quality unit there. And their dice pool is not bad either. Six black with critical two is pretty decent. So I'm willing to swap it around, but actually at number three on the competitive side, I put your boy, the ATRT. The Rebel ATRT. The Rebel AT. Well, I just said the ATRT. <laughs> I, yeah. I didn't. I didn't specify which. I don't have a lot of experience with the Republic one, but they're both uh, good. I, they I both, do think the Rebel one is better than the the Republic one. They both serve a similar purpose. Yeah. They're just a mobile armor plat- weapon platform. Yeah. Uh, and then number three on the fun side, I actually put Droidicas. Okay. It's because I love wheeling them around, like, turn one, and then setting them up somewhere turn two, and having them just lay down suppressive fire with all... And I love the shields. Like, they're just... They're, and but between all the droids, they weren't terrible to put together, as far as models go. I know that was your complaint about the B1s. <laughs> yeah, they weren't, they were, they weren't they that were much, terrible. <laughs> to me, they, they were a good change-up from putting the B1s together. Absolutely. Uh, they still had a lot of little parts, but yeah, it didn't feel as terrible if I'm remembering correctly. Uh, yeah, and I did, I definitely toyed with them as my one of my other choices for a number three. Number well, two. My, my number two uh, is going to the Bark Speeder. Yeah. I think it is. I mean, I've said this 
multiple times. I, <laughs> I probably sound like a broken record, but I think the Bark Speeder is a good unit. And now that, again, the points have dropped in it, it really um, is always a consideration in all of my clone lists. I always think about, well, do I want a Phase 1 Z6 Trooper unit, or do I want to swap for the same exact points and have a Bark Speeder with the, the twin laser cannon on it? Yeah. I it's, was going to uh, say, when that thing came out, Paul, you went from Paul Watson, the Rebel ATRT guy, to Paul Watson, the uh, the Bark Speeder guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I played them a lot. Um, just the fact that you get a compulsory move, um, so you get to move, take an action, whatever that is, aim most of the time, shoot, or if you need to. I've had games where... I needed to chase down an objective all the way across the table and just triple moved with them in a turn mm -hmm. to get them across the table so next turn they could take out that box carrier and you know and threaten my opponent's box that they thought that were was safe. Yep. Um, so I, I think there's a lot of value to them. The red saves on a support unit is really quite solid. Mm -hmm. um, if you can find a way to give them surge tokens like by having like aggressive tactics in your list or something like that um that that tankiness goes up just that much more just by putting one surge token on them and it really makes your opponent question whether they even want to try to kill that thing um and one of the things i really enjoy about support units in general is most of them like the bark speeder those those single support units they really are effective until they're dead. Yep. And and they stay. They, they stay, stay good. at that. They're they good till the last drop. Yeah, and they and they stay that way even if some of you know some of the damaging pieces is can can really be a detriment to some of them, but for the most part, you're still getting some value out of them and probably more value out of them than a trooper unit at the same amount of wounds left. Exactly. Yep, I I totally agree. I I I I can't contribute too much to that because I've only played Bark Speeders a few times and you've played them well more than me. So, uh you're going to be the ultimate authority on that one, but from what I've played, I definitely agree. Uh, so what number, was your number 2? Well, number 2, I put the ATRT on the fun side. <laughs> uh because I really love uh Paul Watson was the one that opened my eyes to to, to how good the ATRT is, and they've pretty much been in all my competitive lists, and pretty much just all of my lists, like one to two of them ever since. And then the, and then on the competitive side, I think I want to swap this with my number one. But originally, I'm I'm gonna leave it how it is right now. But right now, I have I have Tauntauns on there. So like. They, they've they definitely received some nerfs since they were the king of the meta, but Tauntauns are still, like, really scary on the table. They can still move quite quite fast and get to, get to you faster than you're ready for. They get the dodge tokens, they ram, they mess up your core, if they can harass all your trooper units. They're just, they're scary if you leave them unattended. Yeah, definitely. I, um... I mean, I guess to go into my number one, and but I will add to that, Tauntauns are not on my list. That's kind of... That's fair. They they are, I guess, an asterisk in there, because they are, like you said, they're very, very good. Um, I tend to not like units that people, I guess, say are, you know, like needed in a list. Oh, sure. Like, so no, when, you and I are the same that way. Yeah, when Tauntauns first came out and everyone was running, like, if you were running Rebels, you were running running Triple Tauntauns. Like, that was, that was like, it. what you were doing in the competitive yep. scene, and I disliked that a lot. Um, but I will say Tauntauns, I did play Tauntauns for, like, the first time recently. I had played against them a bunch when they were, you know, in they the competitive hot. scene, yep. but I had never played with them because I bought my Tauntauns and then everybody was playing them, so mine sat on the shelf. <laughs> So that's exactly um, what happened to mine, except <laughs> I still haven't played them yet 
because I only bought one, I bought one box and I was going to buy more and then they exploded like they did. And then I went, well, fine, I'll just keep them in my box and show everybody that you don't need them. Yeah, and then I, Trista, my, my girlfriend was looking for stuff to paint and she was like, can I paint those? And I was like, absolutely. Just do it. Like, feel free to do whatever you want with those. Uh, and she actually has got one of them done recently. And, uh, I, I posted something about them in the in the face in the the messenger group we're in, but I'll when when they're both done, I'll have to post them. But she painted them up the like they're black fur and like red eyes or yellow eyes, and they've got like blood all over them. And they're like they're the scariest tauntauns I've ever seen. If you thought tauntauns were scary coming at you from across the board, you've never seen the demon tauntauns <laughs> that just makes them scarier. I have seen those tauntauns, and they are scary looking for <laughs> sure. Yeah, no, I I think they are a very good unit, and they were fun to play. I will say, I only had one unit of them, but they were fun. Yep. <laughs> uh, but my my number one support goes to the ATRT, the Rebel ATRT. Yeah. Um, and and if I had to say a reason why, I would there would it would be a three word answer: surge to crit. Yep. It's so good. Um. And the the point cost of the ATRT is so um, effective for the rebels. Uh, Seventy five points with the rotary cannon is just a really solid support piece that can bring a lot of supporting firepower to an area of the board. I mean, I've played them multiple different ways. I've played them all in a group just putting a huge group of fire down, you know, the middle of the board. Um, I've played them where I've had one on each end of the board and one in the middle, and they just each kind of support whoever is with them um, and then pinch into the middle, you know, those kinds of things. Yeah. Uh, I've played, you know, two go with the main force, and then you have kind of a flanking force with another one. I've played it where the RTs do all the flanking themselves, and then the rest of your force is, you know, somewhere else on the map. Um, they just, they're, they're very useful. You can run them different ways. My favorite way of running them is with a rotary cannon because I think no matter what situation you're in, it's it's beneficial to have that rotary cannon. Um, it, it's never going to be a bad choice. The rotary um, cannon with the surge to crit will never go out of style. It it's just a it's a very solid option. It can it can go after armor if you need it to. It can go after things in cover. Um, you don't have to be as afraid to take those shots. Um, very often in my list with ATRTs, they take their first turn to move either up one or they move on top of a building because they have that expert climber on there and the climbing vehicle. And then they just sit there for most of the rest of the game, just taking an aim and shooting every single round. And it is not uncommon to get four or five hits every single time you shoot. And sometimes it spikes and you and four of those hits are actually crits instead of hits. So yep. it's a very solid <laughs> unit. It will, I don't know. It will, it would be hard to kick it out of my top spot just because again, in rebel list, it's hard for me to bring anything else, but RTs. I agree. Yeah. After you showed me that, like I said, it's been hard for me to take a list without them for the rebels. Uh, the, maybe my favorite thing that an ATRT has ever done for me was at the uh the prime and muncie in my in my round three game i had my my sabine was locked up with operative luke and was like trying her best to uh to stay alive and i was trying to break her free of it and i saw an opportunity i used an atrt and it, the way that the fight was positioned i was able to do a single move and get in base contact with luke and I kicked him in the back and killed him with the <laughs> ATRT's melee kick. And I was like, oh my god, I did it. <laughs> I, uh, I, sure, I was purely just looking to hopefully get one or two wounds on Luke. And then the kick happened, and then he just failed all of his saves. And I went, oh my god, he's dead. <laughs> <laughs> I had a really interesting game um, early on in 
Legion itself. Um, it was at the first like build and play event at Adepticon, and it was I was essentially playing like the first place game, and my RT um, we were playing Recover the Supplies, and I had my Luke Skywalker jump over some terrain and grab a box on my opponent's side, and he had Darth Vader pretty close to Luke at that point. Uh-huh. Um, and I parked my ATRT right in between two um, like little Hoth turrets that they had as terrain pieces in there. Oh, yeah. So where Vader could not get through nope. to Luke without spending... It took him two turns of attacking the ATRT to kill it, yep. um, which was plenty for Luke to get away, to uh-huh. jump back over all the terrain and, and hide. And if you looked at the board of that game, you would have never thought that I would have won, because at the end of it, it was Luke, uh, one Rebel Trooper unit leader, and another Rebel Trooper unit leader, <laughs> and one extra guy. So I had four models on the board, but I had three of the five boxes, and he had yep. Vader and ATST and both of his Stormtrooper units still Man. on the board. So, But that sacrifice of that ATRT was what gave the game my way because Luke was able to then run out. So ATRTs can do some really fun things with body blocking and getting in the way of opponents so they can't get through, giving your units cover, mobile cover behind them. Yeah, it's really they're really a quite solid piece to have. Yeah, so the number one slot on my competitive slide, I might I don't know what I was thinking. I, I actually put stats there. Just because of what they could do for the droids is just so invaluable. I don't think that that's a bad choice in in that. Okay. I think, like I said, Staps, I think, are a very solid unit. Um, and, and with the droids, that, that activation control is so good in CIS. It's one of the main reasons, I think, to play that list, is you get to use the things that you want to use when you want to use them. And those staps can be very devastating. I have been on the receiving end of three units of staps just flanking across the back of my lines, and they cut through half of the army at least before I can deal with them. Um, they can just be they can be brutal for sure. Well, the uh, number one on my fun list, I, I had to put my favorite, the FD dish turret. <laughs> I do it is like super that. fun to it is super fun to squeeze one of those in a list and just plink away at stuff at with with well not even plink away that that feels like a little sniper with two dice it's like if you spike with that thing it hurts oh you yeah can really wipe stuff out if it's like if if you catch a vehicle or if you catch a squad out in the open with their pants down like if you catch the like a vehicle in a bad arc or something like you can really mess it up. Oh, absolutely. I um, I played a couple in a list recently. Um, I hadn't played very many of them, but that range five is so good. Uh-huh. Um, you, you think a stationary, you know, dish turret is going to be pretty terrible for you, but range five gets gets most of the board. Yep. It, it's it's quite good, and to be able to shoot into your uh, like, if, let's say you're playing battle lines. You can set up your FD turrets, and you can shoot into your opponent's deployment zone from the beginning of the game. Uh huh. Which is That's very so nasty. Normally, you can't do that. There's not very many things with range five that are going to put that much hurt. But like you said, I mean, it's got five dice. It's nothing to to ignore. It's not like a little sniper that's like, okay, it's going to kill a guy or two. Yeah. Like, no, this could wipe your squad <laughs> if you're not careful. <laughs> Um, it's definitely, and definitely with some of the points drops that it's received over, um, time with the generators, um, three points for a generator is nothing. Like, I think they're an auto-include on them. It is just Um, an auto-include. And for the FD turret, I really like putting the one that gives it an extra impact. Like, three impact, uh, on six black dice is a really good anti-vehicle weapon, um, for sure, and... You know, very frequently with the FD turret, you're either taking an aim and a shot with those five black dice, or you're recovering and shooting with six black dice um, if you have the generator. Um, you can also put a link targeting array on them to give them another aim in a turn. And, yeah, I mean, with those black dice and the surge to hit, on average, you're, I mean, if you can take an aim, you're going to get four or five hits. So... 
Shall we roll into heavy support now? Finish yeah. us off strong? Yeah, finish us off strong with some heavy supports. Alright, Paul. Where'd you put number three here? Well, number three is probably just sneaked into this spot recently, again with the, the rules changes. Yeah. And for me, that is the, the Gav Occupier tank for ah. these characters. Yeah, yeah. Um, the new the new changes to how um, open transport works um, has really increased, I think, the value of the Occupier tank. Um, there's a lot of talk, I think, right now about the, the E-Webs hanging out in the back of the Occupier tank. Um, that's a lot of firepower in the back of that tank. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, that normally, you know, you, you might have trouble getting in, into position, but the, the Occupier has always been good about getting, like, snows or things like that into position. And now that you can have units just shoot out of the back of that um, and essentially just have mobile heavy cover with very little penalties um, is, is quite good. So um, I think the, the occupier tank lacks its own firepower. It's dice pool is very good. Um, but against like compared to fighting other heavies, um, it's not going to win very many of those battles. I think comparative, or uh, I think Bob also was very excited about that because he has always been, Ever since the Gav first came out, he's always been an avid uh, 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 speaker toward the uh, t- toward the Palp Mobile yes. option <laughs> of putting Palpatine in the back of the Gav. And ever since they changed all the updates, it's like that j- that went from cool idea kid to oh god, I don't know what to do about this now. <laughs> yes, um, both of my both my competitive and my fun lists will reflect. Uh, my agreement with what you said about uh, recent changes to vehicles have have real how vehicles and transports work will really reflect in uh, in how good they are now with their new state. So my number three, I share I have the same unit in both slots actually. Fun fact, uh, I actually put the land speeder ah. as both as both my number three uh, competitive and number three uh, fun. Uh, I think the land speeder, due to the new updates, is just really solid. It's really fun and solid to play. You can put a hero unit in there, and you and no matter almost no matter who you put in there, you can really mess up your opponent's uh, your opponent's plans. You really have to watch where the land speeder goes because depending who you put in it, it can really mess you up. Yeah, definitely. I've done I've, I've I've done it with uh with Han in there and had a lot of fun with that. I know a lot of people were talking about that. Uh, I've recently put R two D two in there a whole bunch with my with my ride two deployment two tactic of just putting R two in there by himself, riding it all the way to deployment, dropping him off, and then letting the land speeder run around and and harass the rest of the list from the back. Yeah, it's definitely um, something that can really increase the value of some of those rebel heroes that you weren't taking because they needed to get a little closer, like the Hans, or doing fun things with R two D two and just getting the 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 easy secret mission. What I've heard a lot of people talking about competitively that I haven't tried yet and I need to consider is putting Sabine in there. Yeah. Now the reason I didn't like the idea at first was because then that restricts Sabine to one to speed two and second she's already speed three so like I feel like the point of putting someone in the land speeder was to make them faster and I think because of base size it technically makes her a little faster but then it just I feel like it restricts her you know to the to the confines of the ship she has to get out if she wants to do anything else like play objective or anything like that so I don't know I might, I might, I, I definitely want to play with it and see if maybe I'm wrong. Yeah, she, she is one that I do think could have some value in there. I think part of that is the gunslinger. Um, yeah. She can shoot twice out of there, which is fun. Um, she, I think she gets better action economy that way, because if the land speeder only then moves you're not once, moving. you can also aim with her and yeah. shoot or dodge and shoot. Um, cause she has that nimble. Oh. I didn't consider that, but that's actually, that seems very obvious. I'm, I'm glad you pointed that out to me. I might, 
yeah, okay, I might try that out just strictly to to save her from having to move. And yeah, give her give her aims and dodges and actions that she wouldn't otherwise get. Yeah, it's it's Smart. interesting. It's worth worth a try, I think. There's oh, a lot sure. of rebel lists that I have that I want to try um, with putting people in the land speeders, and I haven't done as much of it as I wanted to. I did play a Han Chewy list where Han got to run around the land speeder, and it was quite a powerful land speeder, I will tell you that much. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so where's your number two, Paul? My number two and uh, is is the saber tank, and with that being said, I think a lot of this. Um, my heavy list, I picked the ones that I did because of where we are at in Legion right now. Uh-huh. Um, I think there is a lot more armor than we used to see in the game. And oh, yeah. so if, if you, if you can't hold up well against armor, other pieces of armor and you, or you can't take the other pieces of armor out well, then I, you kind of lost some points in my rating system as far as the heavies go. Yeah. Um, and, and I will say, as far as they go, I think the Saber Tank is a, a very cool model. I think it's a really good unit. I think that where it lacks is more in the list and not in the unit itself. I think the unit itself is quite strong. I think the fact that it's in a very expensive list already, you know, in the Republic list, uh-huh. is why it's not as, you know, maybe effective as maybe some of the other heavies in general. But again, if you're just, if we're just playing a game where we're taking a, a heavy, I, like the Saber Tank is, is way up there for me. I think the Saber Tank has more versatility than many of the other heavies. Um, the speed that it has on it, the weapons that it has on it or has available to it um, are all quite good. Um, and then it has some really good um, pilots that you can put in it too. Um, so again, in, in kind of a bubble, the, the sa- that's why the Saber Tank gets to my number two. That is very fair, and I might have to reconsider my number two on competitive, but I actually put the Gav Tank for my number two. Uh, And and honestly, I think think that's a good choice. I don't think the Saber um, is quite as high competitively. Yeah, uh, and I think it's because of the new rules changes, is because of what you can transport with the Empire versus, I put the Land Speeders number three. It's like the... The, what you can transport with the Empire, I feel like, is more open. Heh. Funny pun, transport open. <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's more open to what you can bring, because you can bring entire squads, or you can bring a light support, you know, the, like the E-Web. You know, you can bring all these sorts of different things in the Gav Tank. And, like you said earlier, like, its dice pools are, are solid. Like, it can, and it, and it can really move because of the base size of that thing. So Absolutely. It... It, I feel like it does a lot. It, it definitely made its way back into like every Empire list that I that I saw after the uh, the recent update. And then number two on my fun list is the uh, the Rebel Land Speeder. Uh, it is very fun. You know, it's very it's very cool. It does a lot for the Rebel Army. The new rules changes have made it very solid and uh, a force to be reckoned with. Definitely. So oh, who made, who made it to your number one there? Ah. Uh. I feel like this has got to be a fairly obvious one. I, the number I think one so is, too. The, is the AAT. Yep. It is. It is by far the best heavy in the game, for for multiple different reasons. Um, I think the two, the saber and the AAT, have an advantage with their um, ability to strafe over yep. some of the other heavies. Um, the AAT does it so well because it's so tall. Because the model is so tall, it can get over so many pieces of terrain with that hover keyword or get on top of them. Um, It just, it's so good in that respect, but that also, the height of that unit also adds to its fire lanes. Yep. It has some good height so it can see over lots of things. And, and very rarely 
when I'm playing an AAT or I see someone playing an AAT, can you not get a shot off with it or take that speed one move in one of the directions, one of the four directions it can go and get a shot off? Exactly. Um, I think one of the most powerful things about it, well, there's two pieces of this. One of them is the barrage being able to shoot twice with the, their main gun. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other part is having two two missile slots. It's so oh. good because you can, if you take one AAT and you can put the the high energy shells on one and like armor piercing on the other one, you have an answer for armor. And you have an answer for Jedi yep. because the those high velocity shells have the um, that keyword on them, and the same with the main gun. It makes Jedi, uh, I think, very fearful of that shot because they can't spend their dodge tokens, which yeah. is what makes them very survivable against the majority of you know different things that are on the board. Again, that that AAT is such a such a good model, uh, and it's a great model too. Oh yeah, <laughs> even, like, a, like a, just as a physical it. model, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a great model. Um, it's a lot of fun to play on the table, and honestly, with the new drops, spoiler alert, I guess for later in the show, <laughs> um, <laughs> it's it got so much better with the new repair droids. It's um, watch out, CIS is coming. <laughs> oh yeah, they're coming in hot. And it's the same reason that they also made my my number one competitively. Yeah, I don't feel like it's a competition. This is the part of, if we were a video, this is the part where I would start including a compilation of, like, all the streamed games during the last uh, turn, uh, like, during Gen Con that, like, Sean rolled with double AATs. And it's just like, I would just have a compilation of, Oh man, he just destroyed that unit in two shots. Oh, it's like, <laughs> oh, in one activation, he just wiped that unit. Or just like... Like people just like freaking out of what Sean could, Sean did with like double AAT like yeah. that pretty mu- it pretty much sums up what I feel about them. <laughs> yeah, they're very very good. And again, we didn't even talk about their pilots <laughs> and the oh, fact yeah, that and their field commander is a thing. And yeah, <laughs> Lock Dirt is such a monster. Yeah, Lock Dirt is amazing. So yeah, the the AAT has a ton going for it. So. That's why it easily gets my number one slot for sure. Yeah, easily. Although it doesn't get my number one fun slot. Well, uh, this is one that I'm going to chime in on number one fun slot. Oh, okay. If I had to pick a, a, a heavy that fits in the number one fun slot, it yeah. definitely has to be the T-47. That's fair. That's a, that's a fair choice. Especially now with it being able to surge to crit, it's a lot of fun. And... Uh, a one point wedge is really fun in a T forty seven as well. Oh yeah, being able yeah. to get a free pivot. Oh, uh-huh. and again, the change to repulsor vehicles, the fact that you can use your compulsory move at the end of your turn or at the beginning makes um the, those compulsory moves a lot easier to to get some good shots off with. So that is a very good point, and yeah, I, I do think that the T forty sevens are very fun. But they didn't make my top three, sadly, because the number one slot for me on the fun slot or on the fun list is the Rebel Landspeeder. This, it's just this so much Landspeeder fun. is just all over <laughs> your list. <laughs> it's just so much fun. It <laughs> no, yeah, I did. I did write the Landspeeder for it. for those of you writing writing these lists at home. I did put the Landspeeder for all three of my fun slots. <laughs> <laughs> I was surprised Paul didn't say anything on number two. He was just like. Yeah, man. Agree. Yep. Anyway, what? <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, no. I, I definitely, if I were making a serious fun list for the heavies, I, I would definitely put the T forty seven in there because it is, it is quite fun to fly that thing around. It's not so fun when Darth Vader used to throw his lightsaber into it and bring it down out of the sky, but you know, yeah. I, I don't think that's gonna happen that much anymore. Yeah, it still doesn't hold up against some of the other ones because of its white dice saves, but it's still a lot of fun to fly around the board, for sure. It is, it is definitely fun to fly around. Well, I think that does it for our uh, top three discussion there, Paul. Yeah, that, it definitely does. <laughs> that, was, that was pretty good. I, we matched up more than I thought we would, but I, that, yeah. I think that just means that we we great minds think alike. 
something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you know, great, great in our perspective, and everyone else can think whatever they want. So, I say we move on to a, a nice little fun topic that those of you at home can play along with. Uh, you can, you can, if you, if you want to have a fun, random Legion discussion with your, with your mates that aren't, uh, that isn't all about competitive, but you just want to have, you just, you're just looking for another reason to talk about Legion. Let me, let me pose a little fun question for you. If you could be, you yourself, if you could be any unit in Star Wars Legion, what would you like to be? Now that can be anything from, it was designed originally, the question was posed, if you were a commander or operative in Legion, who would you want to be a stand-in for? Like basically, if I'll give you an example, because since Bob's not here, Bob would be the easiest one in the world to answer this for. Bob would be Captain Rex, because Rex is his favorite character, the clones are his favorite army, and Rex is by far his all-time favorite Star Wars character. So, hands down, no questions asked, if Bob, if Bob Swain were a unit in Legion... He would want to be Captain Rex. And he's not here to say yes or no to that. So if I'm wrong, you know, we'll find out next show. But pretty sure, pretty sure that's where he'd want to be. So, Paul, if I had to guess for you, who do who do I think that Paul Watson would be a proxy for in, in Legion? Mm, this is interesting. Let's see if you can guess this. I want to guess the driver of the ATRT. <laughs> <laughs> No, let me. Th- if, you know, if if that's not the answer, if you if you actually picked a commander and operative, I did. I did pick a commander. Okay, well, let me think. Did you pick the generic? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> okay. All right. It's a right. good guess, though. <laughs> did, you, did you pick operative Luke? I did not. Okay. Well, now I'm. I think that's my three strikes. I'm out. So. <laughs> yeah. Where, take, take me away. Where did Where did you land? So I. I actually have two different answers for this. Okay, cool. One of them is more like what I would want to be if I was like in the Star Wars universe, uh, you know, the the Legion universe as it is right now. Um, if I got to pick like what I would want to be, it would definitely be uh, a Boba Fett. Oh, sure. Absolutely. Um, very cool character, Mandalorian, you know, armor and all the cool gadgets and everything to go with it. Um, definitely one of my favorite characters, you know, from the universe. It would be hard for me to pick if there was a Mace Windu in the game right oh, now. Oh, for sure. Because <laughs> that purple lightsaber, man, I would... Agree. I'd part give agree. an arm and a leg for that purple lightsaber. <laughs> um, <laughs> or, but, just, or just one hand. Somewhere in the chorus on the streets. Just one hand, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something that can be replaced mechanically for sure. <laughs> um, but if I had to pick one that I think fits me as like an individual, as a person, as I don't know what I think that I would be in, like if Star Wars was real, yeah, would have to be. I think it would have to be Chewbacca. Okay. I am definitely, in general, my personality, I'm a very supportive person. Um, I have some really close friendships that uh, I would do just about anything for for those people. And Mm -hmm. definitely have that very, very much like protective instinct, like don't mess with me and mine or you're going to get it. Um, And I think that all fits exactly into Chewbacca and his profile. Um, You know, he, he guardians for the people around him. He keeps them around, keeps them going, protects them from bad things that happen. And man, once, once you get him going, he is uh, he's gonna rage out and come get you. He's a monster. <laughs> or yeah, or he's gonna be uh, you know tough to to get around or get through or force him to do anything kind of uh, thing. And and then too, you know, who doesn't like a big old bowcaster to take some some long range heavy duty shots into, oh, <laughs> into yeah. things? So even Han I, likes it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. I think that, you know, when I when I do things like, uh, you know, play paintball or things like that, I am typically a person who kind of uh, hangs back a little bit and has that more long-range supporting 
shots going on, and I think that's kind of where Chewie fits in, in in Legion right now, as he hangs out with your your you know unit your basic units at range, it keeps them around, keeps them going, um, keeps them alive longer while putting in some fire support of his own at that long range. So I think that's those would be my picks if I had to pick them. That's, I, I like those answers, and you made me feel bad because I didn't pick like a good like if it were really me, like like a like a me who I am as a person kind of pick. Because yeah. but but I quickly came up with one because I was very similar because I would probably do something very similar to what you had for Chewy, which is and this isn't my this isn't my like overall what I'd want to be pick, but my if I had to choose one as a like who who I'd want to be like as a person, I would definitely gravitate for most of the same reasons you said, but actually to Obi Wan. Obi Wan was actually in there, and I really toyed whether I would pick Obi Wan <laughs> or Chewie, but I think that um, Obi Wan seems to stay cool, calm, and collected, and I definitely have a, a little bit of rage monster in me that <laughs> that lives down deep. And That's if a good you, choice then. <laughs> if, you, if you open it up, it's uh, it's crazy. So it's there, you can't <laughs> stop it. Well, then yeah, it's a good choice. Yeah, I definitely picked. I would definitely pick Obi Wan in that because, yeah, for a lot of the same reasons, you know, I like, I'm very protective of the people in my life and the people who are close to me, and yeah, it's very like me and mine. These these are my buddies. If 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 I have somebody who is valuable to me in my life because they showed, if they've shown me that I'm worth of value to them, then they in turn are very much worth in value to me. Absolutely. So, I mean, for a lot of that. Plus, in that version, I get a cool lightsaber, which I would color purple <laughs> instead of blue. But, you know, beyond that, is it? Do I do I have to? I don't think you have to guess, do you? If I if I was going to be a Legion unit, I mean, go ahead. It's, go ahead it's Sabine, get, right? It's like. Sabine. <laughs> <laughs> I would be a proxy stand-in for Sabine. No, no questions asked. Uh, she is. Easily my favorite unit in the game, you know, with her with her jetpack. I would get a jetpack. I'd get the Mando armor. I'd be in the Rebel faction, which you know that's cool. I'm not. I, I've grown to like the Rebels over the course of playing Legion. Uh, as 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 a concept, not so much as a as a faction. As a faction, I love them right away because I love their play style. It's just so we'll die to the last man, but the last man can win the day. And I'm like, oh, I love that. So yeah. Uh, I'm not I'm not totally against uh, doing that, you know, but it's but it's everything I love. Yeah. For the same reasons you were kind of picking Boba Fett, except for I get to have I get to have these huge bombs that I get to lay down at some point. That's awesome. Uh, The command cards are just so much fun. And then, yeah, like, oh, getting to wield the dark saber if I equip it like it's just a bunch of cool stuff. (laughs) Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I definitely plan to, to want to do that at some point. We were originally talking about this and for uh, me and my roommates because we just love to we just love to talk random legion when any any way we can find it to work it into a conversation and we had just dis- we had decided that my my roommate Josh who loves to play Empire he wanted to be uh, a proxy for general veers because that's like his staple commander that he puts in every list because he is the ideal Imperial commander for him because there's a lot of officers and generals and stuff who lead through fear and like, and you know, and like Vader, for example, leads through fear literally in like two of his command cards. Uh, and you've got, but he, he likes the inspirational officers, the leaders who lead through telling their troops that like they can do, they can do, the their their very best job if they put in the effort and glory to the empire Gl- glory glory to the good empire you know and like putting in the uh, the boots to the ground troops being there with the men and making sure that everyone does a good job and inspiring that he he's so mad that there's not really a good that there's not like an inspirational imperial officer mechanically in the game that the closest we have is veers but veers still does a good job of that yeah he sees like the leia He's like, where's my Imperial Leia? Basically, <laughs> it's like, where, where is my Inspire it's Commander? Yeah, where, where is that? <laughs> it's the generic Commander. <laughs> yeah, I mean, he has played a lot with the generic Commander too, so that's he he definitely gravitates toward those those types of characters. 
I think he's I think he's interested in playing Callus when Callus comes out. And he's definitely pl- been playing Aiden as well. But yeah, out, out of all that, I think he was he, he was definitely like I would be Veers. But yeah, that's it's a, it's a very fun it's 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 a fun conversation to just like ask with someone who you've talked with Legion about for a long time, just like, hey, if you you know, if you were a, if you had to proxy yourself in like the same rules and keywords and stuff, but it was you, who would you want to be? And it's a, it's a fun thing to think about and it's a fun it's a fun question to debate and answer. Well, we kept that we kept that one relatively short, but I I just thought we'd bring that up for uh for for people that want to uh for people that want to know. Yeah, I'm just really interested to see if some of the listeners will will chime in and you know make some comments of their own on who they would want to be and you know why are you picking that? Are you picking it favorite character? Are you picking it because it's it's the best unit that you like to play, your favorite thing to play when you play Legion? Or are you picking it because you feel like that character embodies you as a person? Um, very, very interested. It's a very fun conversation, I think, to have um, some of those conversations, like you said, with, with people you um, know, or even people you don't know. I, I'm really excited to hear some of the answers that other people have to give. Yeah. I absolutely, I absolutely would love to hear what listeners, uh, what listeners chime in with. Hopefully, they'll chime in with the post uh, when I when I go ahead and post this episode. I'll also pose the question and see if anyone chimes in. Uh, it reminds me of the old discussion of uh, if you had to make a Star Wars, if you had to pick a Star Wars quote that met your Legion play style, what would you pick? <laughs> and I know I like and that. I, and that post exploded, and that one was so much fun. And I had two, which was. I know one of them was uh, Jenner's. My my serious answer was Jenner. So uh, speech that she like her rallying speech that she gives before Rogue One, which is basically just like we'll take the next opportunity or the next chance that we get, and the next and the next on and on until the day is won or the chances are spent. And I'm like, that pretty a, much sums up how I play Rebels. That's a, <laughs> that's, real, like, that's a really good one, too. Yeah, I was just like, I just basically will keep taking risks until I have lost or I win. <laughs> and then my my more funny quote that I decided to pick for a, a very long or very much along the same concept was uh, was Han in uh, episode seven of uh, I don't ask that question until I've already done it. <laughs> <laughs> I basically just will do it. I'll go, does this work? And then I'll ask it maybe once or twice in my head. And then I just go, I, it has payout. Let's do it. <laughs> Is it yeah. good? I don't know. We'll, we'll find out. <laughs> I like that. What do, you, could, do, you, do you think you have one on the spot, Paul, or would you have to think about it some more? I feel like it's, I feel like it's a question Whoa. you have to think about more. Yeah. A good quote. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Oh man. Yeah. I'd have to probably think about that some more, All right. but I well, definitely, I- <laughs> you know, I, obviously, my, the first quote that comes to mind for me is it's a trap. But, <laughs> um, but probably I'd have to say that because most of the time um, it's myself trapping myself. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, I when get I've trapped in that. Is this a good decision to make? And I sit there like, well, if I do that, then what happens if it doesn't work? And I kind of talk myself either out of something or into something that maybe I shouldn't be. Um I got if one. I had to pick one right now, that would be it, but not because I'm setting a trap for anybody else but myself. <laughs> I've got one for you, Paul. I know I know what a good one for you would be. Okay, shoot. It'd be it'd be Lando from uh from Solo. Everything you've heard about me is true. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes. That'd be a good one too. Uh all right. Well, we'll go ahead and briefly touch on because this is a, this is our this is our dice we're actually hit a dice time record Paul oh, we, gosh. we we've literally recorded the same night that news got dropped so it's the news will never be fresher than it is right now <laughs> so we should briefly touch on what we like out of the new articles and we'll leave the big deep long discussions for those other podcasts that do better yeah, yeah, leave it leave it to the people who are more competitive. Yeah. Or at least love to deep dive and, and make that the centerfold of their of their show because they do a better job. Like Legion Academy. Go check them out. I don't know if they're gonna talk about this this Friday or Tuesday. I'm sure they'll they will have talked about it by the time this episode airs, so Yeah, I was gonna say they're they're gonna talk about it for sure. They're <laughs> definitely they're usually on top of it. Well, Paul, I definitely loved what I saw from both sides. Uh the clones 
a little bit more, even though the droids are probably probably have the competitive edge with what is coming out. But man, I really loved what I saw about the clones. Like they, the cards, the commander looks solid. I was a little afraid he wasn't going to be as solid because they said, "Oh, the droid, the T series is a little better than the the clone commander." But I mean, like they look the same. Yeah. To me, and I and I'm pretty happy with how the clone one looks. I'm, I'm I wouldn't feel bad fielding him. Again, I feel like just by themselves, they probably it's probably more the list that. The droid sure. commander is better because he's better in the list. Yeah, and I think because he can, he's your, you save 10 points on HQ uplink, you can just do the droid chain. Right. From from built in. <laughs> Whereas with clones, it's like, oh, you have one more face-up clone, clone trooper unit, but it's only one. Like, you don't have coordinate. Yeah. So, I think yeah, that I, was probably what they're referring to. Yeah, I I do like both of the command cards um, for both sides, like all three of them. I think they're good. Um, I feel like they fit um, thematically with what's going on. Um, I love that you know both of these new factions got that long range shot that the Imperials and Rebels had with Leia and Veers. Yeah. Um, I'm glad that they put their own spin on them. Um, I love that the clone one has the beam weapon. Um, very, you know, thematic with, you know, what you see in the movies and stuff. Uh, I love that. Um, yeah, just a lot of, a lot of good, good artwork, I think, in general over the, the command cards really good. Um, but the droid, the, not even just the droids, the, all, all of them, yeah, the art, man, is just is impeccable on all of them. They yeah, I really like, yeah, the repair droids, both of the repair droids, I really liked, um, the artwork on those. Yeah, they, think, those, also, those also look really, really solid. Yeah, for sure. Uh, one of the things that I really did like is I thought it was very cool that the clone repair and medic, um, mechanic and medic, uh, are combatants. Yep. So they're not just a, a unit that you put in to heal or repair. It's another clone trooper that you put in that yep. just happens to also have the ability to heal and repair. Um, so it give, gives a little versatility without sacrificing. You know, I know when you know I'm re- running Rebels and I put a uh, Astromech in my Rebel Trooper unit. Well, if I don't ever have to repair my vehicle, that's just a you know wasted unit in this there. This is that one just, health that can't do anything. Yeah. Yeah. And you have to save it to after your heavy dies. So. Yep. It's and really... it pushes your heavy one up on the uh, the the what you call it the the sequence of who dies. Absolutely. Whereas that's not the case for these combatants because they can they don't have to be selected after your heavy. Yep. You could select them beforehand, and with only one one capacity, you're probably going to use that pretty quickly, and then you can just kill them. And then there's yeah, <laughs> then they're just another body. So right. So. Um, yeah, no, I yeah. really, I, I really think that's cool and very thematic, you know, for that faction. That faction, all of their, you know, everything's clones, and yep. they all just had different jobs. Whether you were a sniper or a medic or, you know, anything else, you were also a clone. You know, mm-hmm. you also were bred for battle. <laughs> so. Yeah, I thought that I'm, I'm really glad that they went that route and made it found found a way to balance that out because that I yeah. think that's thematically like very appropriate. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really um, really excited to see some of the some of the things that come out. I think there's a lot of um, interesting list building space with the new stuff that comes out. Oh yeah, uh, especially with again those command cards, and I'm I'm really interested to run, for instance, a a more mechanical clone list with that one pip um, mm-hmm. and taking advantage of that one pip. Uh, you know, on a turn where you would normally get one activation and or you know one order token in here, you could get you know two, four, six, eight, yeah, <laughs> pretty easily. <laughs> a ton. Um, yeah, so a lot of lot of fun stuff, a lot of cool artwork, um, some cool models, um, some different things that we haven't seen before. Um, we're gonna see a lot of new lists come from these expansions, I'm sure. Uh, it's a good time, a good time for those new factions. I agree. So it's, this is this is ultimately what I was waiting for after Clone Wars dropped. I was like, well, now we need these for these factions so that they really are like completely on par with the Galactic Civil War factions as far as 
op- list options and versatility goes. So now that they're here, I'm very happy to say that this is a must buy for for those for those factions for them oh, to yeah. for them to absolutely like for for them to have all the options they really need. Oh yeah, absolutely. I you know I think that it's one of those for for clones you can probably buy one or two. But for yep. droids, you're probably gonna want three or four, five or six or <laughs> more <laughs> if you're really trying to play competitive competitively in some of the lists um, that I'm sure some of the other podcasts will get into in more in depth. But I've heard about some lists that you might need more like seven boxes to field it all. So <laughs> uh, it's gonna be nuts. Ugh. It's gonna be nuts to see some crazy droid lists come out come out of this for sure. Oh yeah. Well, Paul, anything else you want to touch on in the uh, with the articles, or should we we'll, we'll leave that for we'll leave that for everybody else? No, I think I I've said my piece. <laughs> oh, actually, that's a that's a good time because I think I think I just heard the door open. Oh, I see them. Here they come. Okay. All right. What? Oh, shoot! We didn't set up a signal. Uh, what's 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 the signal? <laughs> it's uh, a trap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Here they are. It's a trap! Ooh, uh, Paul, see if you can get that one. He has the box, he's getting away. I'm on it. Nice shot. Good one. Ooh. Alright, well, that actually went a lot smoother than, uh, than, I, than I'd expected. Thanks for, uh, thanks for coming along here, Paul. Let me see if we can, uh, grab this box here. All right. Well, here we go. I got uh, I got Bob's gift all safe and sound. I better check inside. See see if he uh see if it's still here. Hey, what's so valuable? These pirates came and snuck it away from you. Well, it's actually a very important weapon. Take a look at this. This might just look like a DC-17 blaster pistol. But it's actually a DC-17 blaster pistol that was owned by one Captain Rex at one point. Wow, that thing is a relic. Oh yeah, Bob is gonna love this when I get it to him. It, it was his birthday a few days ago, so uh, very uh, very important that I get my co-host a good gift there. Speaking of birthdays, I think it's Joe's today, isn't it? Did you get something for him too while you were at it? All right, well that'll do us for today on Dice. Time. <laughs> no, yeah, it, it, no. In all seriousness, I know it's jo- it is Joe's birthday today on uh, the day of recording. So uh, happy birthday, Joe, to you as well. Uh, hope you en- hope you enjoyed the articles for your birthday. <laughs> the great timing on that. That that was the gift. That's what I got him. I got him the articles. Got That's, it. There we go. Yeah, That's yeah. what I did. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> I actually got a I actually got a gift from Joe today, believe it or not. In the mail I got the uh I got the Legion Academy silhouettes that were for the Patreon from November. The mine fin- mine just came in today and uh gotta say, mwah, they are pieces of art. I heard that him and uh him and Faith uh were putting in a lot of uh were putting in a lot of hours to uh to get them all looking right and they peeled stickers and everything off them to make them look right perfect right out of right out of the package it it paid off they look they look beautiful they were absolutely worth the uh worth the price of admission they're great i'm i, I still need to get the uh the deployment markers but i know that those are coming soon so and then i hear we got maybe observation tokens coming for january so lots of good stuff that are that's going to be rolling out for the patreon if you're not on the legion academy patreon definitely uh Definitely hop on that soon. They put out a lot of good stuff, and you get a lot of great, awesome stuff monthly when they uh, when they ship that out. All right, Paul. I think I think that's uh, gonna go ahead and wrap it us for wrap it up for us. And we'll get this back to the ship. I'll uh, I'll get you the rest of your payment, and uh, I'll I'll drop you off wherever you're going. All right. Thanks for inviting me. I always love taking out some pirates. Oh yeah. Then thanks for coming along. You know the show the show is always uh. Dice Time's always happy to have you, Paul. You're you're always a great you're always a great host and a great guest. All right, and now I, and now I have a good threat for Bob that if he ever disappoints me again, I can just throw him off and replace him with you. <laughs> and I'm sure Bob will just say the same thing back to me, and then we'll just and then we'll just be back to bickering for forever, and and that'll be and that and that's what Dice Time is, isn't it? 
Yep. So <laughs> for both for both me and uh, for both me and Bob, I'm Ben Jetrin. This is my this is my good friend Paul Watson. I hope everyone had a dice time today, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>